The Masters is now underway. Some notables are already off. Xander Shoffley, three under, through three. He co-leads the tournament early on, along with Lee Westwood. Paul Casey and Jordan Spieth are two back and one under. Tiger had three straight pars to start his round. Bryson DeChambeau, the favorite, and in the eyes of many, myself included, the guy to beat, he had three straight pars, and then he doubled the par 5 13th, a double. All right, so no reason to panic, no reason to freak out. Still very early. No, I did not see that coming, but that'll happen even to that guy. Keep it in mind, it is early. You know, you're not going to win the Masters on the fourth hole. You're not even going to lose the Masters on the fourth hole. So this guy's got a lot of work to do still yet. And never forget, Tiger Woods made four bogeys and no birdies on his front nine in the opening round of the 97 Masters. Remember what happened then. He went on to win by 12. All right, so with that said, that's what's going on right now. I want to give you some more background. Like when somebody brings up the two certainties in life, it's always followed by death and taxes. We always get that cliche. Now, when I bring up the two certainties in life, to me, it's Steve Elkington showing up on the podcast for a master's preview and then all of you loving the hell out of it. And both those things happened again this week. Elk showed up on Tuesday. We pushed out that pod yesterday. The reaction last night and so far this morning has been tremendous. It always is. Yesterday, I did play back some of Elk's thoughts heading into the opening round at Augusta and what he thought about Bryson DeChambeau and what he might do to that track. Now, keep in mind, Elk and I taped this out on Tuesday, and now they're playing today after the rain and thunder delay. But I want to go back to what he had to say. Because, again, even with that double, it's so early, obviously. Elk is so high on this guy, Bryson, that he actually compared him and his expectations for him to what Tiger did back in 97. Now, what I didn't get into when I set that up yesterday is Elk's breakdown of how Bryson is going to do it. And it's every bit as compelling because, you know, Elk, Elk can get really technical and really analytical I mean, it's one thing to watch that swing and then see where the ball finally comes back to earth 350 yards down the fairway, but it's entirely another thing to know exactly how and what he's doing. Elk knows, and Elk breaks it down. I know how he built what he built. Everybody thinks it's food, right? It's not food. He's building a bigger, thicker rubber band. I mean, when you think of a, a Tiger Woods and the way he did it, Tiger was real rubbery and springy, like a like a gymnast. They use their body in a certain way, was a real recoil. Bryson's not like that. He's more like a hammer tosser, right? So he's building this big, giant, thick rubber band, that being himself, and he's loading the club a different way. He's getting strong so he can support the weight of this new action that he built. What does that mean? I mean, when you see Bryson, he plays with those one length shafts. He has his arms almost straight at, at a dress. And then when he takes the club back, mate, he hits one or two positions on the way back that nobody on in the history of the tour has ever hit, which is both arms are still straight all the way back, all the way back. He doesn't even cock the club until one inch from the top. And that's where he gathers all this power right there and he's got it. And now he has to unleash it. He's got the body built for it, right? He's real thick, right? He's, when you can push so hard, when you've got big legs, big ass, he's got big neck. He's got it all big right now. Simplified, he's loading the club much later. He's storing that power much later, and then he's getting it out. And he's making a bigger, thicker rubber band. It's not that pretty, but it's very effective. And, of course, what's killing everyone else is he can play the wedges, mate, and he can putt. Professor Elk. Quote, he hits one or two positions on his way back that nobody in the history of the tour has ever hit. End quote. And you heard Elk say it. He is storing more power later in his swing and the food that he is eating is not why he's hitting it further the food that he is eating gives him the weight in his body and in his ass to support the action that no one in the history of the sport has ever been able to get to so when you hear that from a 10-time tour winner and when you hear him laid out like that the entire bryson bulk up gets way more context and more credibility because now we know the how and the why and the math and the science behind it. It's incredible insight to have when you're watching this guy 
on the box in the next four days. You also remember that yesterday I played back some sound of Elk naming the three guys who are not afraid of Bryson. Those three guys, Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas met with the media yesterday, and he proved Elk right. My man's not afraid of Bryson. He's not afraid of anything. Well, except chunky peanut butter, which is something to embrace, not to fear. Like saying something sucks is not a take. We know this. But creamy peanut butter sucks. Don't at me. I'm right. You're wrong. And so is JT. But back to Bryson hitting it like 900 yards. Doesn't matter to Thomas. He recognizes it. He respects it. And he expects to overcome it. I'm not picking a side here. I love both, both approaches. I love that Bryson is doing what he's doing. I love that he packed on 40 pounds. I love that he shocked the system. I love that he went into the pandemic for three months and he came out a behemoth. But I love JT saying, come on, man. I can't do that. But by the way, I don't need to do that. I'm good enough to beat him and everybody else and any track at any time by bringing to it what I have. I love the way he started, too, by saying, he put on 40 pounds, but probably not of muscle. He's just eating everything in sight. <laughs> so good. So what he's saying is Bryson might beat me off the box, but my iron play, my short game, my putting, everything else is good enough to overcome all of that and still win. Right. I mean, there is no such thing as a one-shot hole in golf. JT believes that he's got the game to back up however far back he is in the fairway. And not that far back, but definitely back. He's right. He does. So Elk was right when he said JT was not scared. That guy's not scared at all. Elk was also right when he talked about DJ. Remember Elk called Dustin Johnson, quote, the dumbest, smartest guy out there. I think the dumbest, smartest guy out there is Dustin Johnson. DJ doesn't even give a if his best mate said, I'm not his best mate, like Brooks Kelly's like, okay, that's cool. So I think Dustin Johnson's not affected. All right, so again, Elk's words, not mine. But they're totally meant as a compliment. As in, he's not affected. Nothing faces this guy, which is obviously enormous in golf. And especially when Bryson is already melting guys mentally like Rory McIlroy. You want to hear how unfazed Dustin Johnson is right about now. Somebody asked him his favorite Masters tradition. I mean, is there any question more obvious? Is there any question that a player there would think that they would not get first other than what's your favorite tradition? The tournament's all about tradition. Of course you're going to get that question. And then that hit him like completely out of left field. Like, oh, wow, good question. I haven't thought about that. Wow. Hmm. My favorite tradition. Um, oh, you know, Sandos. Sandwiches. Hey, yo, smart dumb guy. Sandwiches are not a tradition. They're sandwiches. Driving down Magnolia Lane. The par three contest. Caddies wearing white jumpers. Crossing Hogan's Bridge. Butler Cabin. All Masters traditions. Sandwiches, not a tradition. It's not even what he said. It's how he said it. Jay Stu can't believe how wooden and laconic this guy is. Does that sound like a guy who's afraid of Bryson? Does that sound like a guy who is afraid of anything at all? other than not getting his Sandos. No, man. My man is way too smart and way too dumb. Smartest, dumbest guy ever. Anyway, he's heading into the tournament, and he's playing really well. Of course, he is focused on pimento cheese and turkey clubs, but he is hitting it pretty well. Meantime, you got our guy John Rahm. John Rahm made a couple of aces leading up to the event, and he looks dialed as hell. So, if you're not on Bryson, and if you're especially not on Bryson after that double on 13, maybe you want to get on the other three. I can't lie to you. I love DJ this week. I love John Rom this week. I love JT this week. I kind of like Brooks Kepka this week. But if you were to say to me, before the event started, and even right now, that they're underway... And even after that double, I still love Bryson. I still love this guy. Hey, man, that'll happen. And better that it happens early than late.
1-800-636-8686. 